Good morning, my name is Martin and this is the tribe of the fox. Today I would like to tell you about a very old, ancient, uh, northwestern and northern European practice. And you already see it. This is my staff. I want to tell you about how to work with the staff and share some experiences. Now we all know the staff as, um, you know, wizards are usually depicted with a staff, you know, like Merlin the wizard, or um, there are also many graves been excavated, the graves of Volvas, witches, so to speak, and they had uh, usually a metal staff. So a staff can be metal, it can be wood. Uh, okay, so this is a method of working or journeying, for instance, that you can still use today. Now, first of all, this is my stuff. And as you might see, this stuff is still fairly new. Because I turned my old stuff into a room set. Now this stuff here is made out of willow wood and the reason I chose willow wood is that that's for a, a very liminal type of tree. It grows in a liminal place. It grows between land and water, always on the edge of land and water. And the willow tree is of course very common in a land, uh, a country like the Netherlands where there is so much water. And it's, it, it's just in abundance, you know, every year um, this wood is being cut and there are piles of willow wood all over the place. So I take that wood and make a staff out of it. <clears throat> now, the first staff I had, it was, a, um, it was also willow wood, but it was much shorter and much thinner than this one. And it functioned actually really well. Um, but I changed, I switched over to a thicker stuff because that's because of the way I use it. You can't see it right now, but I'm sitting in a normal meditation posture um, on a meditation seat, a pillow, so to speak. Because you put the stuff right in front of you, like this, you hold it, you lean your head against the stuff. So this stuff, it basically represents Yggdrasil, the world tree that holds all the worlds. And there are more than nine, by the way. <laughs> That's just a model, nine worlds. There are more. Now, in between worlds as well. Now, that's also how the stuff works. If you want to journey to a so-called higher world, then you can hold the stuff high. If you want to journey to the underworld, you can hold the stuff low. If you want to journey to well, <laughs> a place on the level of Midgard, you can hold it in the middle. That's one way of working with the stuff. And because I sit like this, leaning on the stuff, holding it with both hands, I prefer a little bit of a thicker stuff like this one. That's just fine for me. And it's willow wood, which is which means a lot to me. It also comes from a place that I really love. There's a little park near here with only indigenous plants. It's like a little island. That is where this willow wood is coming from. This is where my previous stuff is also coming from and that stuff is now, as I told you, changed into a room set. So yeah, it's very important that you choose the wood that you like. I mean, you can take all kinds of wood, you know, if you have a connection with oak trees or you want to do, let's say, healing work, well, try an oak tree. <laughs> uh, I, I prefer willow wood. Um, other people prefer birch wood that has a more feminine energy. 
So it's up to you to learn about trees and their qualities and then pick the type of wood that you want to use for a staff. There are also blacksmiths still around who can make nice staffs, metal staffs, if you prefer that. It's all up to you and it's, it's also a lot of experimenting which stuff suits you, which one fits you. Very important. So, <laughs> I remember that I wanted to know where spirit animals lived and I had no clue. So I was thinking they probably live in a higher world. So I take my stuff, hold the stuff up high. Couldn't find any spirit beings there. <clears throat> then I thought, well, maybe they live in Midgard, in our plane of existence. So I hold my stuff in the middle. No spirit animal to be found. <laughs> so I hold my stuff low, the underworld. And yes, connected. But plenty of spirit animals there. And later on, I asked one of I asked my 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 shamanic teacher about this, and she said, "Yeah, you're right. They are living the spirit animals. They live in the underworld." So I discovered that by simply working with the stuff. It's very interesting. And my previous stuff, I used it for all the worlds, all the traveling I did, all the journeying. This stuff, I more regard this one as a stuff <clears throat> connected to the realm of the dead, the underworld. Maybe I will use it to travel to Jotunheim. And I really like the rough texture of this stuff. I decided not to take the bark of the stuff. I like the rough look and I like the thickness. So that's a very important aspect, you know. So this stuff might be more suitable for the underworld, but that's still an experiment. It's all about experience, you know, animism, paganism, hedonism, whatever you want to call it. It's all about experimentation. So yeah. So again, Choose the type of wood that you prefer or metal from a place that you like and start experimenting with journeying. I made a video about how to journey to Helheim. I will put a link in this video. Um, and then it's up to you to experiment with it, you know. And I can also recommend you to find a good teacher because I am not a teacher. Yeah, I'm just a guy who tells you about my experiences and Dirkje, she tells about her experiences. So both of us are not teachers, but we do tell you, if you want to learn more, eventually a good teacher, yeah, you won't regret it, you won't regret it. So this is how I operate the stuff. And... Um, yeah, sometimes I use a rattle first. I journey to I bring myself in the right mind state of mind by using a rattle, making a rattling sound that focuses my mind, and uh, and then I switch over to the stuff if I have a level of concentration that is necessary to journey to other worlds or to connect with with uh, deities. And that's also up to you to, <coughs> sorry, to find out what you like. And sometimes I don't use the stuff. Sometimes I only use um, the rattle. Sometimes I use the stuff. I do really like the stuff. And if you are able to see auras, if I look at my stuff closely or carefully, this stuff actually has an aura. I can see entire auras. I can only see the uh, this this little little layer of grey. That's all I can see. But this stuff definitely has one. So you know that's animism. You know it's an animated object. It's not just a stick from the park. No. So people, this was only a short talk. 
just to give you an idea of what is possible. And there's another thing, by the way, I should not forget that. You can also put runes or other symbols on your stuff. You know, but I'm very careful with that. This stuff, I, I want to use it for about a year until it's really dry. You know, when it's really dry, because it has been in a moisty Dutch park. <laughs> and it's a very moisty type of wood anyway, willow wood. So yeah. Maybe I apply room to runes to it in about a year, but I really have to be sure because once you carve them in, you don't get them out anymore. And other people attach metal to their wooden staffs, and they do that because metal has uh, protective qualities against uh, some not so helpful beings. So I don't do that, you know, I, I don't like that. I trust my helpers to protect me and uh, I don't like the look of metal on my stuff. But that's a personal thing. If you like it, you can do it. Some people attach little animal skulls, uh, like from birds or mice or whatever, on their stuff. Yeah, you can do that. It's just what kind of energy you want to give your stuff. So that's a very important thing. It's a very personal thing. And again, that's also very important to tell you before I, I, I stop with the video. A staff or a rattle or a drum is basically is animated and it belongs to its owner. It works together with its owner. So if you see somebody's staff or rattle or drum, then don't touch it. Don't say, oh, your staff is so nice and you grab it. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. If you do this with my stuff, then I will not be amused. <laughs> Don't ever do this. Yeah, have respect for each other's holy uh, tools because it's a tool and a friend. Don't touch it. So yeah, I hope this inspires you to experiment with the stuff. And I also hope it inspires you to find a good teacher if you haven't got a teacher yet. Uh, so yeah, and please tell me about your experiences in the comment section because I'm I'm sure that uh, that, that that some of my viewers will work with the staff or with other objects. And please tell me about it in the comment section. That's really nice, you know. It's. Uh, we can share experiences and learn from each other and we can make each other stronger that way by sharing our ideas. So as always, I wish you a nice day, a good health, stay strong and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.